For years, Microsoft has been trying to convince the world that the Surface Pro can replace your laptop. They're back with the all new 2017 version. I'm going to tell you why it's not only the best Surface Pro yet, and maybe the best Surface Pro ever. Stay tuned. So I know what you're thinking, is that really the new Surface Pro or is it Surface Pro 4? How can you tell the difference? And it's true, Microsoft has not messed with its winning formula, which I think they really landed upon with the Surface Pro 3. Now there are a lot of small improvements here, but it adds up just to a phenomenal experience. I'm not even a huge Surface Pro fan or regular user, but I really, really like this device and find it super compelling. Taking a closer look at the changes, we can see the ridge vent is just slightly thinner and has less grating to it. Now this isn't a huge change, but the device is a hair thinner than last year's. The I.O. ports are still the same. You have USB type A, mini display port out, and of course the Surface Connect charger port here that can also be used with the Surface dock. Coming around to the left hand side, not much is going on here except you have the 3.5mm headset jack. Once again, nothing has changed, it's still on top. A little bit awkward, but you just have to live with it. On the top, you still have your power button and your volume up and volume down. You can also see a slight color change in the device, and that's where the antenna is for the Wi-Fi radios and eventually LTE when that becomes available later in 2017. Underneath the kickstand, you still have a slot here for micro SD, which can be used for expansion or for your photos. I should also mention that the kickstand has been updated, so now it opens to 165 degrees as opposed to 150 degrees of the Surface Pro 4. Microsoft calls this studio mode and it almost lays flat, but it gives you just enough angle to make it comfortable while using the pen. I should also mention that the edges of the device are also softer as Microsoft describes it. Basically, there's just less edge on the device and it feels nicer to hold in the hand. Taking a closer look at the Surface type cover, it has been updated for 2017 in a few ways. One is the Alcantara fabric. So this was originally done with the Surface Signature cover and now it's been updated. So it's actually a little bit smoother. They added an extra layer of polyurethane which should protect it. Now we'll have to see how well this holds up. At least if you go with the darker colors, it really shouldn't show any palm marks over the next few months, but we'll have to wait and see. The trackpad is still the same. Microsoft says they've slightly improved it. It's still glass precision and we just really love it. One really nice change is Microsoft has finally added dedicated keys for screen brightness. Previously, you had to use a hidden key combo to do that, and it was really tough to discover, or you had to do it on the device itself. But now you can just use the dedicated F1 or F2 keys. You still also have media playback, but if you notice, there is no skip button anymore, as they had to replace it with the brightness controls. You also have your three-stage backlighting, which you can control with a dedicated key as well. There are also a few new colors for 2017 for the type cover, including cobalt blue, burgundy. You still also get the surface gray, and you can also get the $129 black version, which doesn't have Alcantara. So I know what you're thinking. So far, this is actually pretty boring. What's new with the Surface Pro? There's plenty of stuff actually, but it's all on the inside. For instance, there's a new Core i5 version that's actually fanless. Now we're not testing that here. We're using instead the Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage but a fanless Core i5 is ideal. I will say, however, the Core i7's new fan system is gorgeous. It is absolutely silent. Sure, if you're going to do a Windows update or install a massive file, or maybe even play a video game, you will hear it come on, but it's borderline whisper now. You have to almost put your ear up to it. Another big change is battery life. Now, Microsoft's claiming 50% improvements and an estimate of 13 and a half hours. In the real world, I'm getting seven to eight hours with the Core i7, which colored me impressed. I'm very happy with this. I do feel like I can leave the AC charger at home. Another big change with the Core i7 version, you get Intel Iris Plus graphics. So it is a very impressive GPU. Now it's not a discrete GPU like Nvidia, but it does give an extra boost. And if you really need that power, make sure you get the Core i7. Let's talk about that display, of course. One of the core aspects of the Surface Pro, it is still 2736 by 1824, but the display is improved significantly. It is much brighter. The colors contrast better. There is no light bleed. Now, I know some people are gonna call me out on this. Technically, all IPS LCD displays have some sort of light bleed to them, but specifically, there are no hot spots. That has been a problem plaguing Surface Pro devices ever since their inception. I did not have any issues here. Thankfully, that is is solved. Another really unique change that's not found in the new Surface laptop, much to my disappointment, 
is two color profiles. So you have enhanced and sRGB. The latter, of course, is good for video and photo professionals who want a neutral color palette. Enhanced, though, is what I think most consumers will use as it makes the display almost AMOLED looking, and I absolutely love it. It adds so much punch to the new Surface Pro that it really makes this device stand out. One of the long-term goals Microsoft has had with Surface Pro is to make it feel like a tablet. And they did this with the new Instant On feature. Look how fast this powers on and recognizes me. This is to make it not feel like a PC, but instead a tablet. And I think they accomplished that here. Let's talk about the Surface Pen. A lot has changed here. Some of it good, some of it not so good. First of all, the not good. It's not included anymore with the Surface Pro. It means you have to buy it extra. Now Microsoft says only 30% of people actually use the pen. So that's one reason why they cut it out. The other one is the cost went up. So instead of being $59, it will now cost you 99. Luckily, I think it's worth it due to all the hardware improvements, which we'll talk about in a second. The third reason is it now comes in many different colors and they want users to have a choice of which one they want to pick out. We have the boring silver gray one here, but it does come in burgundy and cobalt blue as well. Now let's talk about those improvements. You have 4,096 levels of pressure. That's an improvement from 1,024, the Surface Pro's pen, and it makes using it a lot better. There's also no more clip here, as you probably noticed. Some people will get bothered by that, but it does have an advantage of giving you a larger, broader side here, so that when you attach the pen to the Surface itself, it sticks easier. And perhaps the biggest change is with latency. It went from 40 milliseconds down to 21. All that means is when you're drawing really quickly on the display, that ink is coming out that tip and it makes it feel like you're using a real pen. If you're a big Surface Pen user, I really would consider the new Surface Pro and Pen. It's gonna cost you a little extra, but those hardware improvements are so good. Other smaller improvements include the speakers and they're still front facing and located here in the display. There is now also Dolby Audio support. And if you listen to music or you're gonna be on a conference call, I think you'll definitely like these. Microsoft got so much right with the Surface Pro 4, but there are always a lot of little things that bother people, whether it was the fan noise, the battery life, or the light bleed. All that's been fixed here in 2017. I really like this device and had a blast using it. And I say that as someone who's not really sold on Surface Pro because I'm a laptop user. I love the portability, the size of it, the all day battery life, that display is so popping. It's just the idealized version of what Microsoft was trying to achieve with this device in the first place. And because of that, there's no downside. Now, if you're coming from Surface Pro 3, I highly recommend this upgrade. There's just too much new that's going on. Now, Surface Pro 4 users should also consider the upgrade. You're not losing anything. It's all wins for you. I do understand it's going to cost you a little extra, but if you're a huge Surface Pro fan, this is all worth the update. Now, you understand there is one downside with this device. There is no USB Type-C, so no forward-looking ports. Microsoft will be giving a dongle later this year. Yes, it connects up through the Surface Connect port. It gives you power and data. Not the ideal solution, but it's a solution nonetheless. We'll revisit that along with the LTE version of the Surface Pro later this year. Overall, the Surface Pro for 2017 is a phenomenal achievement. This is the vision that Microsoft always wanted for this device and it's finally here and you can go buy it now. If you're new to the Surface series, just go and get this device. You'll absolutely love it. So that's my review of the Microsoft Surface Pro for 2017. If you have more questions or you want to read the full review, make sure you head to Windows Central and tune in as we'll be doing a lot more tips and tricks on this device over the coming weeks. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.